Good morning guys, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. I got a call today from Big Al, the scrap metal guy. He's got another case study for us, so we're doing one in the field. This one is a 1988 Chevy C1500, two-wheel drive with a 5-liter V8. Uh, he said that uh, the customer was just driving down the road, minding his own business, and the truck just shut off. So he got towed to his shop, and he said he checked for spark, I guess. He had no spark. Put a new ignition coil on it. That did not solve the issue. So now uh, he calls me up, and we'll go over there and see what we can figure out. So I'm just doing a little homework on all data here. I've got the wiring diagram printed out for the ECM. And uh, the system, you know, it's pretty basic. It only has one input to the computer, and that comes off of the distributor. It's a pickup coil. And then that signal feeds into the ignition module. And like we saw in the 1988 Oldsmobile, this uh, system is very similar. It's a bypass ignition system used by GM for for many years so this is what what it includes there are four wires connecting the ignition module to the computer and there's our ignition coil right there so it's controlled by the module so here circuit design knowing the uh, the function of this thing how it works can help tremendously in saving time uh, with the diagnosis so looking at some background information on the system let's see so the timing when the engine is running is set by the engine control module but during cranking the only thing this um, the only thing that the truck needs to fire the coil is signal from the pickup so Looking at the four wires here, uh, first wire is, let's see, terminal C, distributor reference high, provides the ECM with RPM and crankshaft position information. So we don't know exactly what the signal is supposed to look like, but that wire, you know, signal comes into the module and then it sends a signal to the PCM on this purple and white wire, okay? Second wire is just uh, reference ground low, so that's a common ground. That's this black and red right here. Third wire, it's called the bypass, and this is interesting. At 400 RPM, the ECM applies 5 volts to the circuit to switch spark timing control from the module to the ECM. And opening that wire will set a code 42. That's pretty cool. And then the engine will just run in default base timing. So that's this tan and black wire right here. And we can actually see there's a set timing connector right in that wire, meaning to set the initial base timing, you can disconnect that, and the truck will run just off this uh, ignition module without any input from the PCM. You set the timing, reconnect that, and then the computer will take over and you know adjust the timing accordingly uh, based on different parameters, including a NOx sensor through this little electronic spark control module um, but at this point you know we're not worried about that yet and finally the fourth wire is the EST that's the command from the ECM to the ignition module when the truck is running so that's the background and uh, since this is the only input that we have for RPM when the computer receives that signal on the reference wire it'll fire the two fuel injectors here it's a throttle body system so um, let's uh, head over to Big Al's shop and do some testing I got the XL7 loaded up here a lot of you guys ask what I bring on a diagnostic call <clears throat> well that depends on what the call is about um, in this case it's mostly electronic um, 
no diagnosis, but still got the portable toolbox here. Got our DeWalt driver and drill just for uh, speeding things up. You know, if you got to undo some small fasteners and whatnot. Got our electronics box, spare fuses, wires, soldering, circuit tester, and then uh, down here is a uh, fuel pressure gauge, stethoscope, injector tester, uh, things of that nature. This is the, it's not socks, it's uh, just my survival kit. Just, you know, some hand tools, pocket power jump starter jumper cables and of course we can't forget our Varus and our diagnostic dog hey Petey ready to do some diagnostics he's still a little sleepy in the morning but he, he loves these uh, road trips so we're all loaded up let's go get her done alright here we are on the job site Got this classic Chevy, 5 liter V8, look at all the room under the hood. You'd probably just sit on the fender there and go to town. There's a distributor, ignition coils right here, and then uh, that right there is the ignition module right under the distributor, HEI module. Okay, and uh, Let's see. So we got two connectors on the coil, pink and white. One of them is just a feed. The other one, I think the white one is a pickup for the RPM. Not quite sure, but let's give it a crank, see if it cranks, and then we'll check for spark. Hundred and four thousand miles, huh? <clears throat> All right, let's see. What that noise is? Man, it's got like digital climate control. <laughs> That's pretty wild. Digital instrument gauge. Let's crank it. Okay. I don't know what that sound is. Let's check for spark from the coil. All right, got you focused in on the spark tester. I'm gonna crank it over, see if we got spark. I didn't see anything. So at this point it's a crank no start, no spark. So <clears throat> being a no spark situation that dramatically narrows down the possibilities here. So considering this is a bypass ignition system, the ECM is out of the picture right now and all we need is a pickup coil to send the signal to the module and the module to control the coil. So it's narrowed down to, you know, the pickup coil, the module itself, and the coil uh, you see is new. He already replaced that. Um, but that, that could still be an issue, but unlikely. So I want to see if there's any signal coming out of this module on that purple and white reference wire going to the PCM. That's the only way to check for a crank signal or a cam signal in this case so I'm going to back probe that purple and white wire and then put the scope on it and see if we have a signal when cranking all right so we're on the purple and white reference wire going from the module to the PCM so let's take a look at the trace and crank it so right now the, and, uh, the key is off turn the key on eight point nine volts right there with a the key on 
Okay, so let's crank it. That's all we got. So there's no crank signal. So that dropped to like 6 volts. Now, is that because the uh, system voltage dropped? <clears throat> Let's do a longer time base here. A shorter time base. We want more, more detail. And we'll peak detect it. So, let's see. Let's do 200, 500 milliseconds. And peak detect. Right, here we go. Stop. Zoom. So I bet those little humps are actually the starter, you know, drawing amperage and the voltage is just, it's basically like doing a relative compression test. <laughs> but uh, we're definitely on the right track. So, um, there's no input to the uh, PCM and that's pointing us to that pickup coil or the module itself. Now in this case I guess we can take off the distributor cap and uh, see how that module connects to the pickup coil and measure the signal from the pickup coil directly and then make a call, pickup coil or module. Uh, one more thing I wanted to show before turning the distributor off here is a bypass test to see if we can actually fire this, these fuel injectors uh, by simulating a crank signal on that purple and white wire. So very simple. Actually, uh, yesterday I called Eric up and I told him you know, I was going to do this uh, case study this morning and he said that the ignition modules themselves have a very high failure rate and the simple bypass test that he usually does is with a test light on that purple and white wire just uh, test light the ground we'll touch our lead here and we should hear the fuel injectors fire so let's try that keys on so you heard that I can smell the gas too so and this this is just to rule out a possible PCM issue but you know just a, just another simple test that doesn't take any time uh, just to make you feel more confident alright let's go after the ignition module alright got the distributor cap unbolted and I kinda just want to get out of the way so I marked the uh, plug wires here just you know going around the circle one two Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Get this sucker out of the way. It's decent. There's a rotor. Ways out of the way here. Okay, there's our module. And there's our pickup coil with the green and white wires. And that connects right to the back of the module right there. So, now we can maybe disconnect that pickup coil, crank it over, see what kind of signal we get, and then uh, just check powers and grounds and see if Eric's right, see if it's the module. Alright, we got the module unbolted from the distributor base, and here are the two wires that come from the pickup coil. 
So what I want to do is unplug these guys and just put a scope, positive and negative, right across them. Crank it over, see uh, what kind of signal we get from this pickup coil. All right, final check. We're just on both wires in that pickup coil in one channel. I'm gonna crank it, look at the signal. Definitely saw something there. Let's see here. Oh yeah, beautiful. Got your VRS type kind of sawtooth wave pattern. Minus two to two, so four volts peak to peak. Nothing wrong with the pickup coil. So final call is the ignition module. It should be here shortly. I might even get a after shot of the fix. Well, parts guy just stopped by, dropped off some standard T-series parts, which are, I guess, the cheaper variety, but hey, for this thing, if it works, it works, right? So here's the ignition module. Looks the same, so let's bolt this in, button her back up, get an after shot of the fix, maybe look at the crank signal if, uh, if we got time. Oh, you guys will like this. The new module came with some dielectric grease. So we're gonna squeeze a little out in the connectors here. So there's a lot of uh, controversy in dielectric grease. Does it help conductivity? Does it hurt it? Well, dielectric means non-conductive, but the point here is if the pins are tight on the terminals, it'll push the grease out of the way right where it makes contact. But the grease will seal out any moisture or contaminants. So the grease is basically like a, a sealer. Okay, it doesn't help make contact, but it helps prevent corrosion. At least that's my theory. I don't know, maybe you guys disagree, but uh, let's uh, get these contacts on there and uh, fire it up. Alright guys, everything's plugged in, ready to rock. Moment of truth. Actually this battery might be dead, but let's try it. Ah. Darn. Let's get the jump pack on here. Alright, with the jump pack on there, let's give it another whirl. Power man. Good deal. Good deal. Alright guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.